Hello everyone. This is going to be my uh, fourth video uh, on updates on different projects that I've been doing here lately um, with Dell servers. Um, this particular project was doing um, 10 gigabit Ethernet. I saw some videos online. Again, that's why I put stuff on YouTube is because I end up uh, going on YouTube to, to find out how to do half of this stuff and uh, I'll try to post videos of things that you know aren't really covered out there. Um, or are in different ways and you just kind of have to put two and two together so maybe this will help somebody um, so I uh, again it's 10 gigabit E and uh, trying to work with um, get it to work with Proxmox and virtual machines uh, so a lot of people uh, when they're doing these 10 gigabit connections they're trying to connect it uh, to you know Proxmox uh, between a NAS machine uh, and their server so that um, they can uh, put the virtual machines on the the NAS share and then actually um, you know run that from the hypervisor on uh, as a different machine and and run the file the, the virtual machine over that uh, super fast connection versus locally and that'll give you things like you know high, the ability to do high availability um, you know if the virtual machine file is actually located on your NAS and you've got uh, two Proxmox servers that are uh, set up in a high availability setup um, you can actually switch the, the running virtual machine you know to the second um, uh, Proxmox uh, instance and then you know proceed to do work on the server so uh, that's not really what I'm aiming to do at this point I'll, I may get there in the future um, but what I've uh, uh, attempted to do was just simply share the uh, NAS machines uh, over just the one because uh, I only use two cards for this setup uh, just the one NAS machine directly to the server uh, with the direct attached uh, cables the the DAC cables and um, using these uh, uh, SFP plus 10 gigabit cards that you can get and um, we'll cover those here in just a minute but I, I, I did end up getting it to work but what I wanted to do was be able to through the virtual machines that are on the server on the Proxmox server be able to transfer files between the NAS and the virtual machine and uh, that really wasn't covered anywhere else so uh, but I, I did get it to work um, you know just a little bit of trial and error here and there and uh, first I'll show you some of the uh, the the parts um, yeah, good good weekend. I I, I uh, on a side note on the R210 video that I did, I did get this uh, iDRAC uh, six Express uh, installed in there and and working correctly. That was the right part number for the the machine. Some people on other uh, forums had had issues with the one of the different model numbers and bricking their uh, R210. So that would have been a very bad uh, weekend if that had happened. But that did work. Um, so on to the, to the hardware. What I was attempting to do at first was to uh, saw an, an, again another uh, YouTube video on it. I was going to take a different um, PC that I had as, as uh, parts. It's actually sitting right back there on the floor, and I was going to put a uh, dual uh, in that one, uh, dual card like this, and then set it up with BIOS uh, to be essentially a 10 gig router. Um, that didn't end up working uh, simply because this is the wrong card. Uh, so um, this one here is uh, um, QSFP so this is actually a 40 gigabit card um, so that's this one sitting right here and I don't know if you can see that but those well you can see that the connectors are actually a lot bigger um, than the uh, direct attached copper cables that you use for the 10 gig and, and actually I can show you the just the size difference alone on the on the connector on the singular one there so um, you know, I, I may end up using that in the future. It was only twenty dollars, um, but you know what you end up having to get, and you can see it in this uh, picture right here. Um, these are little converters. You you put the direct attached copper cable inside of this thing, and then you shove this whole piece into that uh, QSFP um, uh, port. But uh, the only thing was is that you know in BIOS uh, and in um, I think it was Ubuntu server. I tried it as well, thinking, "Hey, let's let's try a Linux distribution." Um, it was uh, the problem was driver support. The card would show up, and you could see it in the PCI, uh, uh, you know, doing LSPCI and some of uh, the DMESG uh, commands. It would show up, but uh, 
uh, natively out of the box it didn't support it it didn't show up as an interface so uh, it may be that I just need to install the right drivers for it uh, and it may work but um, the thing also is that this uh, right here will support I think it's five giga threads per second and the bus on that older machine that I had it in uh, would have only supported a, a 2.5 anyway so I wouldn't wouldn't get the full support out of it uh, regardless um, but you know this goes back to uh, what I had said in the other video know what you're buying I had uh, and I'll, I'll show you why in a minute but uh, these um, these cards here the singular cards uh, the MNPA 19-XTR uh, these guys right here are what I have. I had put one in the Dell server in the R710, and then I put one in my uh, NAS for Freebox, that one on the far left there, and just, just one of them for now uh, to, to, to do this testing. I'll probably end up putting another one in the Dell and then another one in my other uh, free NAS box, or NAS for Freebox, um, because they work so well. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll show you here on, on uh, eBay, when you uh, sort for Mellanox, dual SFP+, plus because that's the, the right connector, and then I sorted by, uh, you know, price plus shipping, try to find the cheapest deal. Um, well, you know, the first two cards here, actually, if the picture does them justice, are the right cards that I was probably looking for. And uh, But lo and behold, here on the third one, this guy shows up. And um, it, it's this VPI, it's an InfiniBand uh, card, and it's the QSFP, uh, and, and it's not SFP+. Plus. So I, it's probably how I wound up with it. I was searching SFP+, Plus, so you got to be very careful um, on eBay and, and know exactly what it is you're looking for. I would suggest, and, and you know, after this thing showed up and I realized it wasn't going to work, I went back to make sure that I had, you know, that the description on eBay was accurate for what I had purchased. And it turns out it was, uh, so it wasn't like they were trying to, you know, get one over on me or anything. But, um, you know, when I searched for this exact part number, you know, this came up and turned, turned into, you know, not turned out not to be what I was looking for at the moment so just be careful when you're looking out there and um, so but in order to get these things to work again I, I slapped one into the uh, Dell R710 and then I put one into the uh, um, NAS for free box NAS for free runs on a free BSD uh, uh, operating system and uh, Proxmox is actually Linux it's a, a Debian uh, under the hood um, so both of them uh, right out of the box when I put them in there and I fired them up and, and you know watching the boot screens on them um, it found the cards right away uh, gave them uh, you know a, the driver support for for FreeBSD and, and for Linux is pretty amazing with these uh, and they're older cards uh, but but that was part of the part of the reason why I purchased these particular ones because uh, you know several of the websites and, and guides and things out there that talk about this uh, you know recommended these cards and uh, they, they sure do work but um, in Proxmox here, um, you know, when it shows up, this is that 10 gig card, uh, ENP12S0. Um, so it showed up, uh, gave it the device name. What I ended up doing um, was giving it, uh, well, I gave it the wrong set at first. I run uh, PFSense and I run uh, uh, DNSBL. It's a, a block listing program, and that program uses a uh, um, essentially a proxy and it just so happened at first when I when I picked the IP address range separate from my normal one to give it I happen to pick um, the one that that DNS uh, uh, block list worked from so uh, that was giving me some problems at first so you know regardless I, I wound up changing that I came back in here and changing it to this 9991 um, and then uh, uh, the CIDR notation for the subnet mask I made it uh, .248 at the end so that there would only be eight IP addresses uh, in this range. Uh, you know, you can put that to whatever you want, but um, once you add the card in, um, what you need to do is then create, uh, under create, another Linux bridge, um, and then add that uh, ENP12S0 or whatever your card device name shows up as, uh, as the port slave. and um, so that's that's all you need to do. You don't have to give it um, any kind of an IP address or anything else. You've already given, um, you know, the device one, um, and and that's it. Uh, so when it comes to the virtual machine itself, um, what I ended up doing here 
uh, in the, the box that I tested with was I gave it, a, I hit add and another network device and then I gave it that new Linux bridge. Now after doing all these things you're going to have to reboot these the, 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 the server, the, the Proxmox server here uh, and then when it comes, well and before you do that after you've set it up uh, this way um, you know what timing wise I'm not sure you may have to reboot uh, what, what I ended up doing was uh, you need to set the jumbo frames and um, you know when you do things here in Proxmox it doesn't actually apply until you um, you know reboot the system it's it's all you know sort of pending um, so one of the things I, I had rebooted this several times going through this so I'm not sure you know if you could do it without having to reboot it first but all I know is in order to get jumbo frames uh, to work uh, I did have to come in here uh, into the um, interfaces file and um, essentially we uh, nano uh, interfaces and then we scroll down to uh, okay so the the i face there that's that's the uh, 10 gig card uh, so and the IP address and net mass that I gave it and that's correct um, and what you have to do in order to enable jumbo frames is you come in uh, to the bond that you create and then you have to add this last line here uh, pre tack up uh, space IP spash, uh, sla uh, space link space set and then uh, your actual NIC card or the the card that it shows up in Proxmox as and then uh, space MTU space 9000 uh, and then you do uh, control O to write that out uh, exit the file and then you probably want to reboot again um, so <laughs> with these R710s that, that takes quite a quite a long time uh, but once you're done, that will give your virtual machine a new uh, Vert IO, um, you know, interface, and that's that's what you want to use is um, the pair of virtualized Vert Vert IO, and um, I'll uh, I'll show you what that looks like in the virtual machine because there are some settings that you want to do uh, inside of the virtual machine as well, and uh, here let me let me exit this. All right, and then inside of the virtual machine, it shows up. Uh, you now have another uh, Ethernet connection here, and um, so what I ended up doing for that, um, right here, you go to properties, and then under configure, you want to set under advanced you want to set the MTU to 9000 here as well so that it matches the other one so that you get the best uh, transfer speeds but uh, also here under properties uh, you want to give this virtual uh, interface uh, the IP address and IP address in the same range that um, your connection is in so, you know, again, I had uh, 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 eight available IP addresses. I just gave this particular machine uh, the third one. And uh, you don't have to put in a gateway or, or a DNS or anything. You just put in those two uh, settings right there. And um, what that ends up doing is, is allowing this machine to talk to those shares. And, um, I mean, you st I still have my gigabit Ethernet connection here as well. Um, so, I, I mean, I... I can still map two network drives over the gigabit connection, but that's uh, you know kind of beside the point. I, I wanted to be able to replace those mapped connections uh, on my server, um, and so what it is is uh, you have this 9992, which is the the free NAS box, and I'll show you how to set that up here uh, as well. Let's go back to let's see here this one. And I'll show you on the free NAS machine. This is this is uh, one of my NAS servers, and um, under interface management here, uh, I ended up uh, adding uh, opt two. You can see this uh, MLXEN zero showed up uh, under the the drop down list. So I added it as an opt two. You're going to have to reboot in order for that to take effect. Um, and then under opt two here, you want to actually activate it. Uh, but give it a, a static IP address. So the the, the Dell um, 
card, I put as 9991, and that showed up in Proxmox. And then here I've got 9992. And then again, you use a slash 29 here is what equates to um, that, um, I think it was 248 is, is what we used in the other one, so that we have only eight IP addresses available. Uh, and then, uh, very important, you come down here and you set this to 9000 as well. Set, set your MTU. Save this, uh, again, reboot. Um, and then what you end up with uh, at the end of it, and here I'll give a shout out to these guys. Um, this is the, the, the Proxmox forum where I actually found that line. Uh, you know, again, a little bit of Googling, and you can find somebody who's already solved the problem you're looking for. Um, uh, you know, there it's under the uh, Etsy network uh, interface file, and um, that's the line that you add in there to get the uh, MTU to 9000 because uh, you know with that one set to 1500 and then going in and setting the uh, the other box to 9000 it, it was having problems at first until I made the match and then once I did well, I can uh, show you the the speed test okay so uh, this machine here I'm gonna show you the uh, test transfer I uh, tried this earlier and I uh, was uh, filming and, and uh, try to transfer from a different drive that is actually on this server and um, it was a um, four gigabyte file but uh, it was on a different hard drive an older hard drive 500 uh, I think it's 500 gig hard drive and it, yeah, I don't think it supports the transfer speeds that I was testing from the my main four terabyte drive that I have on there uh, so I've, I've gone ahead and set this up again uh, from that four terabyte drive I've got this test file it's um you know two gigs and uh, now you can see the the actual transfer speeds that i'm getting to that kind of a uh, there you go 350 ish megabytes per second um give a little sawtooth right there but uh i have had solid transfers in that 350 plus range uh, most of the entire time but I mean still that was uh, two gigs in about you know five or six seconds and um, I mean that's a, a solid improvement over my uh, regular gigabit connection so I, I'm thinking there's still some tweaking that I that I need to do here uh, maybe some of the buffer sizes uh, that I can that I can uh, reset but um, you know all in all I'd consider this uh, fairly successful um, you know, if uh, you want to do this, and um, uh, or if you've got any questions, let me know down in the comments. And um, you, you know, I'm, I'm I just do this for fun. But uh, if there's something that you see here that I missed and that I don't know, uh, please leave me a comment below if it's going to make this easier. Uh, if I, uh, you know, if there's anything that I can do to make these better, and uh, we can also pass that on to somebody else. Just uh, just let us know. And uh, hope this helps somebody. Thanks.